The following is an exclusive presentation of the NCCU Sports Network. All right, well, welcome to the weekly North Carolina Central University football press conference with head coach Jerry Mack. Coach, if you could start us off with a comment about the uh, exciting victory this past weekend over Morgan State. Uh, a little bit more exciting than we would have liked, but uh, either way, we came away with a win, which was always good. Uh, offensively, you know, we did some good things as far as running the football. Uh, defensively, we came up with some good stops when we had to, and we did a good job controlling the run. And the special teams, again, came up with some extremely huge plays for us, uh, Nigel McCauley, and also we had a, a mishandle on the punt where we were able to recover in good, great field position. Talk about the play of Jerome McLean. The freshman was named the uh, Rookie of the Week in the conference for his third 100-yard performance this season. Talk about his play. Uh, Darrell continues to just grow in the system and just get better and better each week. Uh, very impressed and very excited about his future here at North Carolina Central. Uh, just a young man who came in and, and, and did everything we asked of him uh, on the field and off the field. Uh, he's able to, he provides a good combination of power and speed. And uh, you know what you can see is every time he touches the football, he, he provides that wow factor, and you just never know what could happen. So uh, we're looking forward to just continue to put the ball in his hands and, and see what special things happen. When I looked at the stat sheet after the game, I, I looked down and had to do a double check because next to rushing yards from Oregon State, it said minus 11. <laughs> Uh, team had 14 tackles for a loss. Just talk about that defensive effort. Well, I think those defensive guys, they'll be getting a state dinner uh, this week as well. Uh, you know, especially the defensive line. Coach Bradley and Coach Blaylock's done a great job uh, of in instilling the intensity about those guys. Jaquan and, and Darius Spruill and Richard Mitchell and also Trey Smith, they did a great job of controlling the line of scrimmage. And that's one thing we always talk about as a defense. You know, if you're going to have a chance to win any football game, you're going to have to dominate. you got to control the line of, uh, line of scrimmage either through dom dominating the run like we did, or uh, making sure offensive, offensively wise we control a lot of scrimmage and run the football. And what you saw on the other day is how important those things are. Because at the end of the day, that was probably the turning turning point in the whole game, is being able to control the line of scrimmage, get those tackles for loss, at the same time run the football and move the chains. Coach, it seems like you, know, last, you went from last year's offense being a pass offense to a run, now defense, went from being you know really strong in the secondary to now a big pass rush. or. Um, ground defense. What kind of led to that? Uh, you know, it's just we've had a lot of injuries. Uh, we, we, we've done probably uh, every receiver position. A lot of guys that we were probably depending on playing this year uh, didn't make it to the field at this point in the season. So these guys that we got playing right now, we weren't expecting for them to have that kind of role this year. So we've had to adjust. You know, football is a game of, of adjustments, and we had to make sure that we adjust our systems accordingly to whatever our strengths are. Now, we still have to do a better job of passing the football, so we're still depending on those David Millers and among the nears of the world to step up. But also, too, as play calls, we got to do a better job of calling those passes uh, and manipulating that ball down the field. So uh, we've grown. Uh, we've changed as an offense a little bit. But the same is the same t point in time. Uh, guys have to step up, and we got to do a good job as coaches of making sure we allow them to contribute, and, and we will do going forward. You came back from 22 down at Savannah State, so you finished that game. Mm -hmm. You had a great start Saturday against Morgan State. Mm -hmm. You kind of scratched in your head a little bit with this team. You got like, we just got to put that full 60 minute effort together and you get the whole package. Yeah, uh, just from a scoring perspective, we're doing a pretty good job each quarter putting up about the same amount of points. So we're playing pretty consistent, but we're still looking to try to figure out how to separate from teams. So, uh, we got off to a great start, like you said, against Morgan the other night, but there were still some, some, in, in, you know, some things in the middle where we didn't do a good job of separating. And that's, that's the challenge to any football team. Uh, maybe we don't have it. Maybe we do. I, I haven't quite seen it yet. But I know one thing is, as long as we continue to play for four quarters and stay focused, we call the team up in the fourth quarter, and we were determined not to let what happened uh, last year happen again this year. So they understand the sense of urgency, and they understand what we got to do to get better. We preached all week about playing, starting fast, and that's what they did. Guys getting complacent? Is it attention to detail? What, what do you think that is? Uh, I just think it's you know getting a little complacent, and they got to pay more attention to detail. You know, we got up on the team fast, so sometimes that scares you a little bit because you know when you get up on the team, a team's going to start fighting a little bit harder. So we got to make sure that they understand that no team is going to lay down for us just because we were defending uh, champions of the MEAC. We're going to have to bring our A game no matter who we play. Along those same lines, Coach, um, you're in these close games. Is your team finding themselves comfortable being in these uh, close games? Uh, well, it's not a situation we, we try to be in or we want to be in, 
But at the same point in time, like you said, Charlie, it, it is a situation where we've been in those situations before. So now, you know, they're kind of accustomed to them. They understand that, you know, more attention to detail must go on with, you know, as the fourth quarter starts to go on and on and how to close the football game. So, you know, when it's like, you know, you've been in those situations before, so we know how to respond to them. What do you expect this Saturday from my Norfolk State? Uh, very dynamic football team, very explosive. Uh, what you saw last week against Bethune, I think they finally saw their entire offensive come together. I know defensively they probably were somewhat disappointed. They gave up a lot more yards on the defense side of the ball than they had been in the past. But, you know, they'll get, probably get that fixed by the time they play us. So, you know, we just got to be careful because you, you're facing a team with a dynamic quarterback uh, and a running back and some receivers that's more than capable uh, of separating from you. Yeah. You held Morgan State to you know minus 11 rushing yards, and last week Norfolk State had six yards per carry. How do you kind of adjust for that explosive offense? Uh, we just got to make sure we read our keys and we make sure we're disciplined. Uh, one thing about Norfolk is they do a great job of play action pass. Uh, they, didn't ha they haven't had the success running the ball before last game that they probably wanted all season. But you see a, a quarterback that's able to push the ball down the field. You see a running back that's capable of, uh, when he gets a seam, to able to explode and get that explosive play. So as a defense, we have to do a great job of reading our keys and not get too aggressive on the run and not drop back too much on the pass. Heading into the Morgan game, you know, the, the message from you was sort of a playoff like mentality. You got to keep winning here to, to, to achieve the goals that uh, you want. Same exact message this week for you guys? There's no different. I mean, we understand if we want any chance to compete for a championship or uh, keep our hopes and dreams alive, we're in a one game elimination type situation. So we have to go out there and perform. We have to come out there with the same intensity that, that we did against Morgan State. Hopefully, obviously, homecoming to help that and then understanding what's at state, and, and that's going to always help. For you, what's the most exciting part about coaching a homecoming game? Uh, just to see you know, your, your alumni and your friends and, your, and families and people like that uh, fellowship and embrace one another. Uh, it's always good for our, our athletes now, our student athletes, to hear from guys that kind of pave the way for us. So I always enjoy hearing those old stories and, and what North Carolina Central football used to be and just trying to continue to build that legacy and tradition and keep it going. Excited to coach a game on Halloween. Does that add anything extra? Are you going to pull out any like costumes or <laughs> anything like that? I don't know if we pull out a costume, but we got we got a different look. We're gonna we're gonna uh, we're gonna show. You might not. No, you, you have to wait and see. You have to wait and see. <laughs> well, it sounds like you're you're not going to give us any details about this new look uh, on Saturday. But usually, when a coach does that. And that gets the guys fired up. Have you have you brought it up to their have you brought it to their attention? And are they fired up yet? Well, I think they know, uh, and uh, you know we'll talk about some things throughout the course of the week. But uh, I hope it gets them fired up. Anything that we can do to get any kind of edge, uh, we have to try to do. <laughs> coach, we talk about homecoming. You've been a part of several as a student athlete and as a coach. What what's been your most memorable homecoming moment? Uh, I can't think of anything off the top of my head, but I'm, I'll be honest with you. Last year was an electric atmosphere. You know, we got a chance to play a quality opponent last year in Hampton, and uh, we jumped out on them uh, pretty fast. And you know, the, it, my, it was my first year at, at experience of North Carolina Central homecoming, so that'll definitely go down as one of my most memorable moments. Did you get steak dinner after the win last week? Uh, that got postponed. I went home to a sick child, so <laughs> so this Friday definitely. <laughs> All right, we're here with North Carolina Central University senior safety C.J. Moore. Uh, C.J., if you could just start with a comment about the uh, team's victory against Morgan State. Um, I think it was a good team win. I think um, we were real resilient in that win, and um, it was great to come out with a win versus a quality opponent like that. You look at the stats and see you guys had negative 11, or that Morgan had negative 11 rushing yards. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I mean, that that was something that was really special to us as a defense because, um, you know, we give up a, a lot of yards and sometimes, like I said, the stats don't actually show the flow of the game or how the game went. And, um, you know, we pride ourselves in stopping the run and that, that's what we pride ourselves on as a defense. And it finally showed up in the stats. And when you look back and um, our coach told us that at the end of the game, we'd be able to tell if we won or lost. Um, if you just looked at the stats, the rushing yards, the sacks, the turnovers. And so when you go back and you look at that and you see negative 11, I mean, that's something that, um, you know, you can't describe how that makes you feel. The team got off to a great start against Morgan. You're up 14-zip early. You're coming off that great finish against Savannah State. 
you, you still like kind of in search of like that perfect effort, that, that full 60 minute effort as a team? Or, or are you confident with, you know, the, the overall effort you guys have had? Well, I think at the end of the day, you just have to find ways to win. Um, teams, you know, other teams are, they're, they're, they're good teams we play and, and they get a chance to play too. So I think you got to look at it like that sometimes too. Of course, we, we're still trying to put together a perfect game, a complete game. But um, I think we, we were in a hard fought game. And um, we, like I said, we found a way to win. So it's not more or less, you know, we're starting hot and finishing cold or, or starting cold and finishing hot. I think um, you just, like I said, you just got to find a way to win. And, um, you know, you got to give credit to those teams too because they do get a chance to play too. CJ, is it uh, this team's uh is this, uh, this team's personality to, you know, you all been in close games, you know, except for that Savannah State game, but even that one was, you know, touch and go there. But is this personality of this team, you know, don't mind being in close games? Well, we don't, of course, we don't mind being in close game because over the years, I think y'all seen, um, we've been in a whole lot of close games. So we, we kind of, we're experiencing that um, part of the game, being in tight ones and finding ways to close them out. And, you know, we've even lost a few of them. And, you know, you learn from that experience. And, of course, you never want to be on the edge of your seat the whole game. You kind of want to finish teams off. And, and our motto, leave no doubt, was um, based off of that principle. But, like I said, at the end of the day, leave no doubt is pretty much just finishing off games and, and um, you know, walking out of every game, knowing that you left it all on the field and you gave yourself a chance to win. So every time, you, you know, you see us in a close game, at least we know we're putting the effort there to give us a chance to win. How much do you know about this uh, Norfolk State team? I know they're a very talented team. You know, we get to watch film on them, and um, I've been watching film on them before even this week. So, they, I mean, they have a talented team, and you know, as I only can speak from a defensive standpoint, and their offense is um, pretty talented. You know, they they have, um, I think, one of the best quarterbacks in the conference, and he's pretty special. He's a transfer guy. And the running back is pretty special too, and they they utilize their players really well, and um, they know how to out scheme a lot of defenses. And I think last week y'all kind of saw they were in a you know a shootout with um, Bethune last week, and that just shows you how explosive they can be as an offense. So you know we have a we have a long week of um, preparation for an attack like that. Yeah, what do you think when you see that they scored 49 points and they didn't win? Uh -uh. <laughs> I mean, I, I think, like I said, it just shows you that, um, you know, that's two good teams playing each other. And you had a t one team that found a way to win. But, um, you know, that's not a team that doesn't know how to win. They know how to win games. And they know how to finish games. And, you know, last week they didn't get the job done. But you, you can clearly see the effort is there and the execution is there. Anytime you score like that, you're executing at a high level. So, you know, we have to be prepared for that this week. Last year, you guys are really good at stopping the pass. This year, you guys are obviously really good at stopping the run. What's kind of led to the transformation in the defense? Well, I, I think, um, like I said, I think it's just, it just kind of goes both ways. The stats kind of don't tell it all. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we stopped the run a lot this year, so teams kind of get a chance to throw the ball more. You, you kind of have to throw the ball more. And um, there's things we can work on on both ends, of course, but it, it's hard to be, you know, as a defense, it's hard to – to give up both, you know, we pride ourselves in stopping the run first and foremost, and um, we, you know, we we want teams to drive down the field on us, and a lot of times that's what they do. You know, you know they catch a few big plays um, a game. You know, two catches can get you, you know, water your stats down. But a lot of times teams are really um, throwing short passes and getting up field. So we're okay with that. We're okay with giving those type of plays up. So. You know, it's not. I don't think it's one thing where we, this year we're going to decide to stop the pass, and next year we're going to decide to stop the run. I, I think it's just um, teams. You know, they got to take what they can get when you play our defense. Coaches preach kind of a playoff mentality. Um, sometimes when a coach says something, it can go in one ear and out the other. But the fact that you guys lived what you lived last year with the tiebreakers and all that. I mean. Can you guys take it to heart? You guys know that it really is a, it's a one game at a time season. Absolutely. I, I think I've um, said it all along, you know, when I talk to my teammates and stuff, it's a completely different type of feel now because we've been here before and we were just here last year. So we kind of know the importance of every game. And I think after we lost our first conference game, you know, it was a little different than last year because we all knew, you know, our backs are kind of against the wall. So, um, you know, that's the approach we take in each and every week that our backs are against the wall. And, you know, right now we feel we're in somewhat control of our own destiny and we want to keep it that way. So anytime it's like that and anytime you got a leader like Coach Mack who preaches 
um, playoff mentality and playoff game to us, it's kind of easier to understand because we were in this situation last year. So this is definitely our mindset is, you know, one game at a time and deal. It's, uh, it's homecoming. So I, I know that the players will get a little, little, little bit more jazzed up for homecoming, right? A absolutely. I, I think it's perfect timing. You know, we play a good team like this. And, um, you know, sometimes you get an advantage, a little advantage when the um, team's got to come and play you for homecoming because you're excited. Um, I think campus is, is, is great right now. The energy around campus is amazing. And um, that's something we definitely can carry with us into the game. You know, that emotion and that momentum is something that um, carries us. And I've been around, you know, here at this school for a long time. And, you know, we have great fan support. We have great fans. And um, that energy, I mean, that's something you can't prepare for in practice. It's going to be pretty special, you know, being homecoming and all. Do you have a favorite homecoming memory? You've been here for a while, so you've <laughs> gone through quite a few of these. Uh, homecoming's always great. Um, you know, I think I'd say my favorite one, of course, was last year because I've lost on homecoming before, and that's the worst. You know, losing on homecoming is the worst. But I think last year, you know, um, like I think it was a similar situation. We played a great team, um, a good team, explosive offense uh, was coming in here. And uh, we just fed off of our, the crowd's energy and the energy of homecoming the whole week. And um, we had a great performance. And so that's something that, you know, we look forward to doing this week. And it's kind of similar. And I think it was amazing last week. Um, that was – that. I mean, last homecoming was great because all phases of the game um, kind of came together. So This has been an exclusive presentation of the NCCU Sports Network.